We're talking defense? What's that? I was going to ask if you could take a walk on. We can use one that can play. So, <laughs> not you. <laughs> what do you guys got? What, what, what have you seen? What do you want to know? Don't look at me. I just came from a Vegas. Lot. So far, we've seen a lot of different motion and different alignments of the inside linebackers, especially in that dollar look. What is it that you like to do in terms of moving those guys around in their alignment, kind of challenging offenses in that way? Yeah, so... Sometimes you'll see us out there playing traditional linebacker looks if it's old school where it toes at four yards, square stance is perfect football position. And there's a benefit to that. You're in great position and not cross over your feet and play square and strong. But then there's other times, other defenses, other situations where we want to be bluffing around. We want to be in more of a blitz stance. We want to walk up into the line of scrimmage to threaten the run through to the offensive line to you know potentially take double teams off of the defensive line. And so there's some benefits to bluffing around and blitzing out of those books as well. Um, we want to have you have to prepare for both of those books. What's the benefit of putting a outside linebacker on, on the line at this point or having a, a corner be able to play linebacker depth? Like that's some different stuff than maybe we've seen in the past. Yeah, so outside linebacker on the line, which we have seen a little bit in the past, that we have done a little bit in the past. The benefit of that as opposed to putting your hand in the dirt is there's a lot more ability to recognize formation, recognize how you're being attacked, maybe recognize and adjust to motions. Whereas that edge guy has his hand in the dirt, pretty much can key the man in front of you and that's about it. So there's limited adjustments that you, that you can make. Also don't have the ability to do different drops into coverage and things like that when your hand's in the dirt. Okay, Benefit to putting safety bodies at linebackers, it's a different speed than maybe the offensive line is used to when you're blitzing. Um, a little bit more speed in coverage. You can ask inside backers now to do jobs that the safeties are used to doing. Probably will be doing those types of things uh, more often against spread formations or maybe passing situations. But what we can do is put different body types into positions that they're not used to practicing against, that they're not used to seeing on a daily basis and use a different skill set and, and then try to protect maybe the skill set that you took off the field with some of the calls that we make. You know, a lot of... Well, he is, first of all, great football instincts. The better your instincts are, the closer you can play to the box because it just happens a little bit faster, right? The closer you are to the box, leverage gives you vision. So the deeper you are, the more vision you have, the more time and space you have to react. So him having really good football instincts allows him to play a little bit closer, still see it happen to react very quickly. You also have seen in the past that he's comfortable being up there close to the core and, and taking off blocks. And he's a physical, strong tackler. So what we're able to do with him a little bit, I, I would call it a hybrid position, but there's times and calls where he's gonna seem a little bit more like a true linebacker. There's times and calls where he's doing safety things. Uh, we're able to mix up some of the blitz pass from those types of positions that you might not be able to do without an obvious tell when it's coming from a normal safety. I'm guessing these are some of the things that you're learning now that you're working with these guys more. And I know when, when you guys first got here, all the players were asked about adjusting to a new staff. How far along are you in, the, in having a handle on what your guys can do defensively? Maybe that you didn't have an idea about when you first got No. So it's coming along fast now, okay. right? During off-season workouts, yeah. it was starting to come along, but that's not football, yeah. right? And then you get your first two practices where you can't put the shoulder pads on, but it's still football, mm -hmm. so it starts to come along a little bit faster. Okay. And then yesterday was the first time we could actually put pads, pads on. on yeah. So you're starting to identify it a little bit more. Our, our spring objectives, one of our spring objectives as you would guess, is to identify who our playmakers are, make sure we get our best 11 on the field. But part of that was clearly stated, identify their strengths and play to their strengths, right? And uh, you learn that a lot better working with them hand in hand than watching it on film. Defense lost their top defense slash playmakers in Canada. It feels like one of the inside linebackers might be able to be one of those guys that could be disruptive playmakers. Like, would you, I guess, would you agree with that? Do you think they might be able to do that? 
We have guys that can be disruptive, the splash playmakers, as you put it, yes. What we can't have is guys trying to go be those guys, okay. right? You can't go in and try to be a splash playmaker because then you start guessing. And we talk about it's better to be consistently good than occasionally great. And when you're trying to be a splash playmaker, what happens is you end up being occasionally great. You have to let it come to you. If you're consistently good, those plays are gonna come. Mike, what's the challenge of coming here to be the defensive coordinator after Jim, given how kind of beloved he was here and people think of him? What was your approach to trying to ingratiate yourself with this new group? You have to be you, right? You can't do anything but be you now. I respect the heck out of him. He's a great coach and great coordinator. Um, and very thankful that he was preparing the guys like he was so that we're prepared good football players when we step in the door. But as long as you give him the respect he deserves, which he does, then you just be yourself. And these guys want to be successful. So they're embracing what we're doing, appreciating what they had and what they've learned, but they're ready to move forward. Luma told us last week that he's been studying Ivan Pace and what he did for you guys in Cincinnati last year, and kind of like what he wants to emulate this season. Do you see some of the physical comparisons, kind of the same body type as opposed to? If, if you stand them next to each other, they're pretty comparable body but you know, body builds, there's no doubt about that. They're both strong, explosive kids, there's no doubt about that. Um, there's going to be pieces of Ivan Pace's game that Luma can take and adapt Use, but again, just like we were talking about with the splash play, because he needs to be him. And we're going to keep identifying his strengths and make sure he plays to his strengths. But uh, if I was an inside backer, I'd be studying Ivan a little bit too. But then you got to figure out what you can use. You can't try to be Ivan Pace. You need to be you. The players here have talked about um, your energy and enthusiasm is something that really stood out to them right away. I'm sure that goes with you being you, but where does that come from um, for you as a coach? Or where do you think that? It's not something you pick up, right? I mean, that's that's who I am. I think that when I was competing as a player, I was high energy. I, I always tr I take pride in trying to be the same in terms of that energy every single day. Like, I have a bad day like everybody does. You're never going to know I have a bad day. I'm going to come in with the same energy every day. I'm going to try to lift you up. We have meetings at 6.45 in the morning. You're going to think it's 6.45 in the evening when you look at me. That's just... Who I am, that's the way I am. That's not something I took from anybody else. And and that would be, you know, something that the guys adapt to and, and hopefully embrace because we have to embrace who we have here. That's Coach Tress, that's who I am. When you got to talk to Coach Long in the first four days or something like that, he's still installing the uh, he's, uh, installing the playbook and whatnot. Just, mm -hmm. What's been your plan to install the you know, you know, defense or spring ball? Yeah, so a lot of it is the offense and defense working together. There's no doubt about it. We basically went through the first two practices and put in our normal down and distance, what we call CNN situation, competitive normal, normal situation defenses against 11 personnel. Because that's the most common personnel group we face in offense, and that's Coach Longo's most common personnel group. So that's what we did day one and day two. Day three, put the shoulder pads on, all right? And the focus was on red zone and our defense against 12 personnel, but still CNN normal down and distance situations. Okay, we move forward to practice four, practice five, now we're gonna start putting in third down packages. And then beyond that, to be truthful, it's putting in adjustments so the guys have to game plan and adjust from day to day, and then it's putting in situations where Coach Fick, Coach Longo and I all get together and say, okay, we're gonna emphasize two minute now. We're gonna go short yardage goal line now. And that schedule is still a little bit to be determined based on how everybody's picking things up and moving forward. Just as a follow-up, big for you and Coach Longo kind of match up with each other in terms of trying to match up what you want to go up against each other? 100%. I okay. think that's the only way to be a great team. You have to work together. You can't have a, a tempo offense that results in a unfundamentally sound, you know, poor defense, or you're eventually going to lose, vice versa. You can't be all about defense and the offense is asked to simply prepare the offense and have a great team eventually you're going to lose. So we work together. Um, I think we're doing a good job of it. We're going to continue to do that because we want to be the best on both sides of the ball.
Do you know what you have out of the cornerback group yet? I know it's so early in spring, but that's a group that you got Alexander Smith, you got a transfer come in. The only thing I can tell you that I know so far mm -hmm. is we have a lot of competition going on right now, which means they are pushing each other, which is really good to see. Okay. And we talked about that in the back of the room. Like, the most respect you can show the guys who are the ones, okay, so Jordan and Moom are the ones right now. The most respect you can give those guys is not by taking a back seat to them if you want, just going to take their job. Yeah. That's the most respect you can give them because that's going to push them to be their best, and that's what they want to be. Yeah. They want to be their best. I'm seeing that competition in the book corner. We just, we wanted to have an identity. This is certainly mad town. I think that the uh, defense swarms and and uh, I will tell you this, there's a time in my coaching career, and it, as a matter of fact, playing against Wisconsin, right here in Camp Randall, and held a running back. I'm not gonna get into naming names who's <laughs> damn near leading the nation in rushing to a relatively poor performance, but he walked up to Le'Veon Bell after the game. I was at Michigan State, and you know, the running backs go and talk together, the quarterbacks go and talk together. And he said, wow, I thought you guys had 100 guys out there all day long. And I sort of embraced that, I'm like, okay, we want offenses to feel like there's 100 guys out there at all times. That's the way we're swarming the ball. That's the type of effort and attitude we have. And that's, it's a bit of mayhem. That's what it is. Coach, on Saturday, uh, or actually yesterday, Luke talked about how you've kind of gone through a similar adjustment when you initially came to Cincinnati. Do you think it's been easier understanding that you're re replacing a heralded defensive coordinator, kind of embracing that role since you've done it already when you came to Cincinnati? It's never easy, but let me tell you the great thing about replacing a great defensive coordinator. You have well-prepared players, right? I would gladly step in and take over for somebody who's really, really good because I know there's going to be some fundamentally sound football players that I get to go work with, okay? Yes, you can have faster improvement if you take over a bunch of guys that stink, but ultimately, you're still going to stink. I'm happy to take over for Jim Runner, I promise you. Rotate. Yeah, you want to talk to them. competition? <laughs> He is pushing. I promise you that he's a good player. He is a uh, he's a one, right? And you can start saying, wait a second, how could there be more than two ones? But he's a one, and he's really impressed me because he has the ability to be really heavy-handed where he shocks offensive linemen and you see him stumble back two yards and the next play slip him and make a play in the backfield. And having the ability to do both those things and having a feel for when to use each of those tools is really impressive. So he's a one. Good amount.